Good afternoon, my name is Julian Ridden and welcome again to the Moodle Man blog. Uh, today's video post is a bit of an experiment. This may work, this may fail, uh, this may go on for hours, I'm not sure. Um, one thing I end up doing a lot of these days is creating themes for clients. Um, they quite often come to me with a website and say, look, I want you to turn this into a theme that we can use on a Moodle website so that our branding and our look remains the same. Uh, it's actually not as hard as people may think, so I thought I'd try and do today actually a live example. I've got a client site I've been asked to build. I'm going to actually video the entire process with you to show you uh, what's involved. Uh, before I go any further, I want to talk about some of the tools I use. Um, please note that all the tools and sites I reference in this podcast today, I'm actually going to be uh, putting links underneath uh, in the actual blog post itself. So if you're looking to use these applications, please check there. Look, let's, without further ado, jump straight into it. The first thing you have to have, of course, is a web browser. Um, I like to use Firefox, and the reason, my, reason I like to use Firefox is for one main reason. It has a plugin called the Web Developer Plugin, which gives us a new toolbar. Um, the biggest reason for this? Well, when it comes to defining Moodle themes, there's a lot of CSS involved. And uh, this little toolbar gives you access to a tool called View Style Information, which allows you to hover over any element inside Moodle and actually see information about it. So if I was to hover over this uh, block header, if I click on it, I can see exactly what style information is. It's a side block H2 tag. Here's the current style that's applied to it. It's actually also sitting within a .cyblock.header area. And when it comes to making changes to adapt Moodle, knowing exactly what CSS to edit makes a huge difference. And this tool saves you the hours and hours of hunting around that may normally have been involved when trying to uh, adjust the CSS. This is the first tool I like to use. Um, being a Mac user, um, I'm going to stress that for the rest of these tools that I describe, um, I have a tool I like to use called MAMP. Now there is a Windows version of this called XAMP that does the same thing. What this program does is actually creates and allows you to run a local web server. Now for Mac, this can be a little bit, uh, a little bit of a problem, but usually quite an easy thing to set up. But for Windows users, it involves IIS and, and especially trying to get MySQL installed. It can just be beyond the realm of the average person. XAMP on a Windows machine allows you just with one double click install process, have a full uh, WAMP, Windows, Apache, MySQL and PHP server set up uh, literally in a couple of minutes. Um, what I also like about the uh, MAMP Pro product is it allows me to specify hosts. So I actually have a demo.localhost which actually goes and points directly to my Moodle site. If I go here and you looked at my URL, um, this is actually a demo.localhost which is now a local version of the website that is running. Uh, other tools that I use on a Mac um, is BB Edit. Uh, it's just a text editing application that allows you to uh, edit uh, text files. Um, obviously you can see here it actually highlights, it recognizes SQL, PHP and HTML files. So it makes things a little easier to edit. Um, TextPad is a similar program that's uh, pretty cheap on the Windows side. We could obviously use um, Notepad or, or WordPad if you so wished. Um, another all important tool for me here uh, on a Mac, I couldn't live without my CSS edit. Uh, this is a tool that allows me to go through and, and work on CSS files uh, and also gives you demos of you know the impact it has on the left hand side so this just makes it very simple allows me to jump straight to tags that I'm working on. It also has a fantastic feature where I can actually get a, a live preview pointing to a website, in this case my localhost Moodle site, which I should change that um, because it's called demo.localhost and as I make changes to a file I can actually see immediately how it's going to impact uh, on the Moodle site without having to constantly save and, and load files. Um, just for time's sake today, I may not end up using much of this today, but uh, yeah, if you're a Mac uh, web developer, this is a tool you must have. Um, and lastly, uh, but no, by no means least, uh, I'm actually going to be using a bit of Photoshop uh, to do some image work, maybe to determine some colours. Again, if you don't have the budget for Photoshop, <laughs> that's completely understandable. Um, a great product called the GIMP, uh, G-I-M-P. I know what you're thinking, but it's not what you're thinking. Uh, GIMP is an open source, uh, fairly available web, uh, sorry, image editing application with quite a lot of the power of Photoshop, but with none of the price tag. So look, that's the, um, the different programs I'll be using. And uh, without further ado, I guess, uh, let's jump straight into it. So first thing I'm gonna do is actually bring up the client website. Here's the website that I've been asked to turn to a Moodle theme. Um, as you can see here with the website, there's usually a few defining elements. Uh, the colour is the main one, we've got a very distinctive red background. Um, this is obviously what I call a fixed width theme, which means no matter how wide the browser window, this stays the same. 
Uh, I really disagree with the style of layout when it comes to an e-learning system. So what I'll show you how to do is how the home page can be one width. We'll keep the home page fixed width, and when you go into a course, the course will actually go to a variable width so that we can really maximize the space in the browser. Um, a header is pretty simple. You've just got a logo and a gray bar with some uh, menu options in it. Uh, I've been asked not to replicate these menus as such. I'm going to actually try and, try and keep the same look and feel by using this to keep my navigation inside. And at the footer, we have a, a grey and, and, and black footer. Um, the last, obviously, very important element of the Moodle side is the block. So I can see here that the block is typically um, you know, a grey header with white text uh, with black writing and a grey border. There is a special version for the categories, but again, I've been asked to uh, mirror this standard look and feel which all the rest of the blocks and their normal pages have. So I've really identified the quick elements of what I'm trying to replicate. To get started on how to edit this, um, there are a few different ways we can start. I'm actually just going to go here into uh, my Moodle install. Now I build a lot of themes, so you can see here there's a, a lot of themes listed. Um, what I'm going to do for today is I'm actually going to duplicate the standard theme. So if I come down here there is a standard theme. I'm just going to right click and duplicate that. Now I've actually done this already to save some time. You can start from scratch, you don't have to start with an existing theme, in fact many ways I'd recommend you don't. Uh, but because I want to try and do today with uh, a degree of expediency, I've decided to go uh, with duplicating that. And I've just renamed it to be called Client Theme. So here we have all the standard files. I've also renamed the CSS files, because normally they're called styles underscore. I've renamed, renamed mine to client underscore color client underscore font. So you do not need to do this. The only reason I like to do this is it means if I ever have uh, another Moodle theme open and I'm editing the files, I can easily differentiate. Uh, the one thing that I will edit straight away is a config.php. Now again, I've opened that up already in my other system. So here I am in my uh, BB edit. And what I'm changing up here straight away is the, what is the name of the style sheets that this theme will be using. So because I've changed it from styles underscore to client underscore, I've just changed this first line. If you don't want to do this step, you keep the standard names, then you can really ignore this altogether. But the one thing you must make sure you have if you're building your own theme from scratch or with duplication is you keep standard sheets equal true on. We actually want standard sheets. Now what this does is with this theme it will put your style sheets on top of the standard style sheets that are inside uh, Moodle as it ships. This means that as new versions come out, you know 1.6 to 1.7 to 1.8, uh, style sheets are constantly being added to your website won't break because at least we'll always bring in those style sheets from the standard theme and then you may choose to you know, overwrite them with your own changes later on but at least they will exist. Um, the rest of the settings here, look I'm not going to go through. I, I will put a link by the way um, in the notes underneath the blog to a presentation that I put together a, a year ago which actually explains all the different tags. But for now look I've made this change up the top. I'm going to let that go and just move back. Now the next thing I'm going to talk about is uh, what files we're going to be editing today. Now we've talked about the CSS, you don't have to have separate files, I prefer this way of working. Uh, the reason I prefer to work this way is as I go through and edit the CSS, I know that all the colour information is here, all my layout information is here, and all my font information is here. Um, with CSS Edit, uh, this program that I love, the idea of having tabs just makes it very simple to flip between them. If you do want to have them as one file, again there's nothing wrong with that, feel free to do that. We also have a whole bunch of other files. Let's just talk about the ones that I think are really important for us to realise. We talk about config.php. We also have header and footer. These are the other two files we're going to be focusing on through the design process. A header and footer are really the container that surrounds uh, a Moodle uh, website. So have a look at a typical Moodle site. Here's a standard theme. If I look at the top, we have a header here. So let me just turn off this function. We have a header up the top and a footer down the bottom. And the reason I call it a container is the header actually goes along the top and down the left hand side and a footer is the rest of the container going across the bottom and up the right hand side that surrounds uh, a Moodle site. And so uh, as you start talking about how we change these areas, you know how we put the logo in up here or how we're going to change this, be editing the header and footer. But the first thing we have to do is re into the CSS. We have a few different elements here of the site we know we want to recreate. We want to make sure we grab the fonts, we want to make sure we grab the colours. Um, that's all done with CSS. And uh, to do that I'm going to use another one of my favourite functions from this web developer toolbar called ViewCSS. 